Hi there. When you are starting off in marketing, you tend to think of sales as this simple term. But often you start coming across a lot of different terms which all relate back or refer to sales in different ways. They can be pretty irritating if you are not sure what they are exactly referring to. What I am going to do in today's video is talk you through 8 such terms which are all different ways of representing sales or some aspect of sales. And once you understand these terms properly, when anyone is referring to any aspect of sales in product marketing, you will never be confused once again. So let's get started. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. If you're new to this channel, I suggest you subscribe now. And if you have any thoughts or comments on what else you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comment section below. There are three sets of measures that I'm going to talk about. The first three measures are measures of overall sales and they are most commonly used by different marketers. The next four measures are the ones which are used very commonly in trade promotion and that aspect of marketing. And the last measure is something which is used most commonly when it comes to calculate the efficiency of trade marketing. So here we go. The first measure is value sales. It is also sometimes referred to as dollar sales or the respective currency in whichever country it is being used. Dollar sales is the actual reported sales. As recorded in a global or local currency, it is the total product sold expressed in monetary terms. To calculate dollar sales, you need to multiply unit sales, which is the total number of units which have been sold, with the average price per unit. When someone is referring to sales, they are most likely referring to value sales. If nothing else has been clarified, then you can very well assume that it is value sales. The second term for sales that we are going to talk about is unit sales. Unit sales is the total number of packages or units of a product that are sold. Every single piece of product that is bought by the consumer is a single unit. Unit sales is the aggregate of the number of such units. It refers to products of the same size. To calculate unit sales, you need to divide dollar sales or value sales by average price per unit. The third measure that I am going to talk about is volume sales or equivalized sales. This is a measure which is often confused with unit sales. Unit sales refers to the total number of units of product which are sold, whereas volume or equivalized sales refers to the physical volume of product that is sold. It is calculated by converting the number of units sold in a common measure such as kilograms or liters or anything else which is relevant to that category. So what is it that makes volume or equivalent sales very important? Now imagine in every category there are brands with products of different different sizes. Now when you have the value sales and when you have the volume or equivalent sales, you can measure the changes in both. And on the basis of the interaction between the two, you can try and understand the reasons why certain changes are happening. It is possible that the consumers might have shifted to smaller product sizes or larger product sizes and therefore it will reflect in equalized sales numbers but it might not reflect the same way in the value sales numbers. So you can find out a lot more when these numbers are calculated and represented separately. So those were the first three measures that I wanted to talk about. These three measures are measures of overall sales. We spoke about dollar sales or value sales, unit sales and volume or equivalent sales. Now let me move on to the next set of measures. The next set of measures are something which become very important when you're trying to understand how impactful your trade promotion is or how active your trade promotion is. The first measure that we are going to talk about here is called base sales. Base sales is a measure to show the sales of a product in the absence of any promotional effort. In other words, it is a way to understand how much of the product would be sold if there was no in-store promotional or merchandising activity either by the brand or by the retailer. And the measure which is used very commonly along with base sales is incremental sales. 
Incremental sales is the sales above the expected or base sales that happens due to the presence of in-store promotional or merchandising activity. There are some cases where incremental sales is also affected by certain external factors. For example, your sales might have gone up because of weather or seasonality related reasons. When you subtract base sales from value sales or the total sales, what is left is incremental sales. Therefore, base sales and incremental sales, these are two measures which are used most commonly within trade promotion and they help you understand how impactful any trade promotional activity that you might have done has been. You might have done promotional things such as running a discount within the retail store and when you want to understand how impactful that activity was within a period of time, these are the two measures which are most commonly used. The next two measures are measures which are most commonly used to try and understand whether there was any promotional activity or merchandising activity in retail present or not present during a specific period of time. This next measure is called promoted sales. Promoted sales is the total sales that was generated when some form of promotional or merchandising activity is present. This measure isn't commonly used to understand the impact of promotion. It is used most commonly to understand the duration or degree of promotional activity and its efficiency. And the measure which is often calculated and represented along with it is called non-promoted sales. Non-promoted sales is the total sales that was generated when no form of promotional or merchandising activity was present. Similar to promoted sales, this measure isn't commonly used to understand the impact of promotion. It is used most commonly to understand the duration or degree of promotional activity and its efficiency. So we've spoken about four different measures in trade promotion. Base sales or incremental sales help you understand the impact and promoted sales and non-promoted sales help you understand the presence of trade promotion activity. The last measure is something which is used very commonly and very easily confused. It is something which is used in the context of measuring marketing efficiency and it's called sales uplift. Sales uplift is a measure which is referred to as a percentage or an index. It is the additional volume of sales that is generated beyond what is expected from a merchandising or promotional activity. This measure helps you understand the effectiveness of sales promotion. To calculate sales uplift, you have to take the total promoted volume divided by the base volume and multiply that by 100. Sales uplift is often wrongly used to indicate the increase in sales. However, the reality is that it is not just about the increase in sales. It is about the increase in sales above what was already expected to be the increase in sales because of some promotional effort or some merchandising activity which was done. That is what is sales uplift. To conclude, I have put together eight different terms which are often used to indicate sales in different ways in product marketing all in one sheet. If you Remember this one sheet, you will never be confused again. The measures that we spoke about today are dollar sales, unit sales, volume or equalized sales. These three measures are measures for overall sales. Then we spoke about base sales, incremental sales to understand the impact of trade promotion. Then we spoke about promoted and non-promoted sales to understand the presence of activity. And lastly, we spoke about sales uplift, which is an indicator of the efficiency of trade promotion. So the next time someone tries to throw you off balance by throwing these terms at you, what you can do is throw back more terms at them and confuse them even further. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, please hit the like button. And if you have not already subscribed to my channel, you should do that now. There's a lot of good content coming up. And uh, if you have any thoughts or comments on what else you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you for being a part of Business of Marketing. See you soon in my next video.